Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is the Insta360 X3, a 360 degree camera designed to capture everything around it. For immersive photos and videos, you can explore in headsets or scroll around on normal screens. Announced in September 2022 and costing around $450 or pounds, it's the successor to the One X2, now sporting a slightly larger sensor, high resolution output, a bigger screen, and a load of other enhancements. To find out what it can do and whether it's a worthy upgrade over its predecessor, I handed the X3 over to 360 and action camera expert Ben Harvey, who knows way more about these kind of products than I do. So here's his full review. Over to you, Ben. Thank you, Gordon. Now the X3 and its predecessor, the One X2, these are from a different camera lineup to Insta360's modular system. Now the modular system consists of the One RS, and the more recent one inch edition, which Gordon and I made a separate review on. If you're interested in that, we'll put that in the description below. But today's video is about the X3. Insta360 sent me a pre-production version to test for this review, and I was able to provide some unpaid feedback on an earlier beta sample. Note that this is not a sponsored video, and Insta360 will not be reviewing the video before it is published. If you're not familiar with 360 cameras, quite simply you have a wide angle lens on each side of the camera and they are stitched together in camera to create a full 360 spherical video, which you can enjoy with a VR headset or you can recompose the frame in editing afterwards for a two dimensional video. Now that you're familiar with 360 cameras, let's talk about the specs of the X3. We have a half inch sensor, which following DP review suggestion, we are now referring to as a type one over two sensor to move away from the confusing sensor sizes. The X3 captures 360 video in 5.7K at 24, 25 and 30 frames per second or 4K at 30 and 60 frames per second. If you switch to bullet mode then you have the option of 120 frames per second in 4K or 180 frames per second in 3K. It now captures stills at 72 megapixels and carries across all of the familiar features such as HDR stills and video, time lapse, star lapse, time shift, bullet time and a few other features. As previously, the X3 is fully waterproof up to 10 meters without any housing or accessories. Taking a look around the camera, the majority of the front is taken up with the vertical format 2.29 inch touchscreen. There is a lens at the top on each side. Below the screen are two physical buttons. The left is currently programmed to stop and start recording and the right switches between the front and the rear lens. To the side is the power button and a new quick menu button that will take you to your custom presets. The other side houses a battery which if removed provides access to the micro SD slot and at the top is the USB-C slot which allows for charging, data transfer and accessories such as an external microphone adapter. There are LED indicator lights on the front and the rear to let you know when the camera is on and when it's recording. There are multiple internal microphones scattered around the camera and a tripod mount to the base which can be used with the invisible selfie stick. Now a lot of people are going to be interested to see how the X3 compares to the One X2 whether you're deciding which one you should buy, or if you already own the One X2, whether you should upgrade to the X3. Let's start with the sensor. The X3 now has a Type 1 over 2 sensor, which is an improvement over the Type 1 over 2.3 of the One X2. Although the video specs remain the same resolution for 360, if you're shooting with just one of the lenses on the X3, for a wide angle standard video output, then you now get up to 4K in 24, 25 or 30 frames per second. Whereas the One X2 was limited to 1440. The new sensor allows stills to be taken at 36 megapixels for each lens, therefore a combined 72 megapixels for 360 degree output. This is a significant boost in resolution over the One X2, which is 18 megapixels. The most obvious difference from a user's perspective is the new screen. The One X2 had a small round screen which, although it did the job, there simply wasn't enough real estate for the image and the menus. The X3 screen has much larger icons, the menus are crisp, and you even get a vibration feedback when you scroll through the menus. Although the screen is a significant upgrade over the One X2, the resolution doesn't quite match the mobile phone screens that we've become accustomed to, but it is more than enough to navigate the menus, to check exposure and composition. You will notice that the resolution of the screen drops when you start recording, to a preview resolution. I've checked this with Insta360 and they confirm that it's normal, and it will be necessary in the final production model. The new buttons underneath the screen and the quick menu button on the side are very welcome additions, especially if you're doing underwater activities when a touchscreen can become very challenging. Owners of the One X2 will be pleased to hear that the port door on the side has been completely redesigned and it now has a reassuring removable hinge door that clicks into place. 
The X3 body looks to be around one millimeter thicker than the One X2. And although it's only a minor increase in size, you can tell the difference when you hold them both at the same time. This may be the result of a larger battery in the X3, which is now 1800 milliamp hours versus the 1630 milliamp hours of the One X2. However, there is a larger screen to power, which might balance out this increase in capacity. From full charge, I managed to record several 5.7K clips before the battery eventually died. I alternated between having the screen hibernate after one minute and the screen remaining on during recording. However, having the screen on definitely increased the temperature of the device. I would say very warm, but not too hot to hold. It's worth noting that every 30 minutes of recording, the camera will stop and start a new video file, which creates a gap of about five to 10 seconds in between clips. Overall, I think that the battery performed well and the 64 gigabyte memory card that came with it was full well before the battery went flat. One of the clever new features is Me Mode, which makes use of the invisible selfie stick to create a video that does not need reframing and puts you in the center of the frame. The benefit of this is that the camera usually has a bitrate of 120 megabits per second for a complete 360 video. However, in Me Mode, you get the same bitrate for half a sphere, essentially using the bottom half of each sensor and lens, therefore achieving double the bitrate of a reframed 360 video. If your intention is to film yourself with stabilized wide angle footage, then Me Mode is going to be the best option for you. At the moment, this mode only offers 1080 in 30 and 60 frames per second. However, I am told that 24 and 25 frames will be included in a future update. Hopefully 4K can be added also. Taking a look at the stills coming from the X3, we are now benefiting from 72 megapixels in 360. And there is a visible difference when compared to the older One X2. Take a look at this same scene shot on the One X2, looking closely at the label on my top. The text is illegible. However, on the X3, you can make out that there are numbers. It actually says 1982 on the label. Here are the images side by side. First of all, 100% reframed export from the studio app, followed by a 300% crop. The video files out of the X3 also see an improvement. Although the overall resolution remains at 5.7K, the same as the One X2, we know that each sensor creates a 4K image, as this is possible in single lens mode, plus the camera can create an 8K time lapse. The 360 must therefore be downsampled from 8K. We are subsequently getting a better looking image with more detail. You can see here the same scene, the One X2 on the left at 100%, and the X3 on the right, also at 100%. Cropping in, the benefits of the slightly larger sensor and higher resolution can be seen again. Low light performance has also improved. Here is a side by side video of my office with the blind closed, showing the One X2 on the left at the camera's highest ISO of 3200, with a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second. On the right, the X3 at exactly the same settings. And you can see here that we have a much cleaner image on the X3. The audio capabilities of Insta360 cameras has always been a bit of a weakness in the past, so whenever I use these devices, I choose to record my audio separately. But of course, that increases the workflow. So has the audio improved on the X3? In terms of audio, this is what the built-in microphones sound like on the Insta360 ONE X. There are a few microphones scattered around the camera, there is a light breeze at the moment, and the internal camera's microphone level is set to zero dB. So this is the default audio level and I'm about 50 centimeters away from the camera. Now I'm using the audio adapter, which is allowing me to plug in an external microphone. I'm using the DJI wireless microphone system here. And uh, if you use the correct accessories, you can actually hide that in the seam of the camera. And at the moment, because I've done a few tests, this is now set to plus 10 dB because the internal levels of the camera are quite low and that's recording into the camera, into the video file itself. And finally, as a little bonus experiment, I thought I would record the audio externally. So at the moment I'm recording in the camera and then I'll synchronize this in post afterwards with a clap. And then I am recording the audio completely separate on this DJI wireless system here. And what this experiment does is show whether or not the audio is any different recording into the same microphone externally versus via the camera. Now, based upon my tests, I wouldn't be using the built-in microphones, especially outdoors. Using this microphone plugged directly into the camera, I thought it sounded pretty good. But when you compare it to this microphone direct, I think that the internal recording sounded a bit flat and a bit muffled. Let me know what you think down in the comments below.
As previous models, the stabilisation was fantastic, I had no issues walking and talking. The crisper image also allows for cropping without the image becoming soft, something that was an issue on the One X2. There is also an in-camera HDR video mode, which may be helpful in certain situations, but as you might expect, the shadows are lifted quite a lot, and the image can look a bit flat at times. I found the dynamic range of the standard video pretty good anyway. All of the video clips in this review were shot in auto, I turned the sharpening down to medium, and the colours are straight out of camera using the Vivid colour profile. Since I've been testing a pre-production model, there have been occasions when the camera's crashed, and I've had no choice but to remove the battery to get it working again. I've experienced two corrupt video files, which were a result of the camera crashing, but otherwise, the firmware is pretty stable. The stitch line is also a bit more visible than previous models, especially in high contrast areas such as the sky. It's very subtle, but hopefully this is addressed via a firmware update. Overall, the X3 is a massive upgrade to the One X2, and I would 100% recommend getting the X3 over the One X2. First and foremost, the improvement in image quality for both videos and stills makes the X3 the better choice, accompanied by the much larger screen, increased sensor size, bigger battery, improved feature set, and even the redesign of the port door make the X3 a much nicer camera to use. Insta360 have really streamlined the process of using a 360 camera because not everybody wants to create 360 content and have to reframe it in editing afterwards. So that's why they've created me mode and they've also improved the quality of the single lens mode. These modes provide a wide angle 4K stabilized video, which means that this is now an action camera and a 360 camera. Although the one inch edition has a larger sensor and better image quality, if you need more resolution for photospheres or want the reassurance of a completely watertight camera, then the X3 is going to be the better choice. Hopefully you found this review helpful. If you've got any questions at all, then let us know in the comments down below. There is an affiliate link in the description should you wish to support the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.